te tiriti o ia tēnā ko te kawenata tuatahi i haina tia e o kutupuna, e hara i te The Treaty. Nā reida, ko ia tērā ko te kawenata whaimana ki roto i te āhuatanga e kia nei ko te contra preferendum. Nā reida, ko ia tēnā ko te mea hei arahi i te uniana nei, ko ia tēnā ko te hihia me te tūmanako. I think about Te Tiriti of Waitangi and the Tiriti of Waitangi as two separate documents that mean two different things. And it upsets me when people put a slash or put it in brackets afterwards as if they're the same documents. Because they say fundamentally different things. Yes. And um, in, in the Māori, Māori text that reaffirms tino rangatiratanga, and in the English version it's widely agreed that Māori ceded sovereignty. But, um, yeah, the, it's, it's, it's a numbers game. 500 plus Māori rangatira signed the Māori text. Hobson, the chief British negotiator, signed the Māori text. Um, that's what the kōrero was in Te Reo Māori, as you said, and in Port Waikato someone forgot. Mm. Someone forgot the text, so they signed the English version. And indeed, contra preferentum in lay people's terms is about, like for those of you that are parents, it's about the Mars bar rule. It's about when you've got two kids and one Mars bar and whoever cuts the Mars bar in half, the other one gets to pick. Mm. And so in international law, there is no ambiguity about what is the proper text. And when we start giving airtime to the English version, we're feeding into the misinformation that our government has been propagating for some years because it suits them and their, um, their, their claim at unitary parliamentary sovereignty. So, yes, technically we should always be talking te yes. is my understanding. And I, I believe that it, it's um, a roadmap. And that roadmap, we need a roadmap to keep us clear on what our, our duty is and how we can ensure that our people who are working that aren't marginalised, that our people that are... And, and I'm talking all of the members of this, of this union, but specifically for those who are the vulnerable. And it gives us a roadmap on how to afi, how to look after, to care for, <coughs> and to move into the future. As a, a nation, as a people, and as individuals. And that's important to me. Aye. And if, if Te Tiriti is indeed the terms and conditions by which my ancestors came to this country, as a, why would that stop when I'm at work and being a union member? It doesn't stop. Um, and yes, um, Te Tiriti is between hapu and the crown, and a union is not a crown agency, blessing. But it doesn't mean we can't embrace the learnings and the opportunity of that relationship and that covenant. It's about including people. And it's not about uh, one on top of the other, it's about doing it together. And I think that uh, with those kind of values, um, we certainly will be a treaty-led uh, union, given that uh, the treaty-led union it's an everyday living thing. It's not a thing for today, for today and then we forget about it tomorrow. It's about something that's enduring. And it's about making certain that we help each other on the way. And that we journey, that we take this journey together. Kia ora. <coughs> and um, I think about... Um, my background's in social justice, activism and, and in public health. And I think about, as, and I'm a member of the TEU, I've always joined the union, been a delegate in one in a different union for many years. But um, if unions are about social justice, they're about racial justice too. So it's about looking after the interests of the Māori members. 
it's about looking after Māori staff and creating a culture where there's um, no racism within the union and that we're proactive in standing in solidarity around issues that are important to Māori members. And so that we're not just interested in our pay and our working conditions, we're interested in the world and where we can advance issues of, of racial justice. So it's about solidarity and I would be bitterly disappointed if our union wasn't interested in those issues and mm. didn't consistently turn up and get involved and get engaged. Because I think that unions can be agents of anti-racism and... I hope that um, all of the unions continue to step up and challenge one another to do better in this space because at times there has been an action and I've certainly witnessed over the years some extraordinary racism within unions. So we've got to sort out what's going on domestically and then be proactive. I love this union. I've always espoused that this union is the most Maori friendly union that I've ever been part of. And I've been a union a unionist for the last 55 years. I first joined the union when I was 15 in the freezing mix. Okay. But it's never been like that. It's never been so exciting as this that we're moving into. But as well as that, is that we've got to safeguard the future. Aye. We've got to safeguard the future, not only for us, but for our generations that are to come. Because this is a beautiful place to live in. You know, I've, um, I've traveled the world. I love what I see there. But I cannot abandon what, I'm, what we do here. We are an exemplar. Uh, to the world, and our union is an exemplar to the rest of the unions here, and that in Aotearoa, and that can extend uh, internationally. You're so optimistic. Oh yes. 